Fifth graders, it's pumpkin pie. Your word would divide truth out for us today in our home, and then we met in uh, we met other places, right? Yeah. Not really on different things. So, uh, part of the church was not a building. It was there was not a. We have no reference of a strong Jewish population. What would it mean if there was a Jewish population? Synagogue. There'd be a synagogue, right? Mm -hmm. And the scrolls of the of the Old Testament would be there. But we have no reference at Colossae house. We have no mentioning of the Jews in this entire letter. So, so there was no meeting house, so to speak. So they met in homes. Uh, anybody guess one of the homes that they met in? The... Uh, uh. No, no, she, that was Lydia. That was uh, in Philippi. No, that's in Israel. No, no. Timothy's the pastor down the road, church down the road. Remember Ephesus? He don't live there. You remember a fellow by the name of Philemon? Philemon, who had a house church. And he had a servant named Onesimus, remember? Yes. Yes. And Onesimus robbed him and took off, yes. wound up in Rome, chained to Paul the Apostle. And Paul led him to the Lord, and then when he was released, when Onesimus was released, Paul sent a letter with him to Philemon, that's the letter to, the, to Philemon, and asked him to bring greetings to the church that's in your house and here I'm sending you back he was he was unfaithful to you but he was he was a blessing to me he's now a brother in Christ I want you to receive him not as a slave not as a servant but as a fellow believer in Christ Jesus so we know that Philemon operated one of the house churches in Colossae we don't know the names of the other people but let's hear about another one of the ministers uh, that had been there at Colossae. Uh, chapter 4, verse 17. And say, and say to Archippus, 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 take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that ye may fulfill it. Okay. So he was a faithful minister as well. Uh, it is believed, we don't know for certain, but it's believed that Epaphras was the current pastor and Archippus was the previous pastor. It seems reasonable, but we don't know. And then uh, we have, as we mentioned, Philemon. And in the, uh, would somebody look up and read Philemon 1 one and two. He'll do that one first. Oh, I forgot to turn my phone. It's going to be one of those days. I can't do that. Let me turn it off. Before we go any further, I don't want to hear the sound effects anymore. Okay. Here we go. Turn it off. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Acts, Romans, and two Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, <laughs> Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 3 John's, Jude, and Revelation. Learned that in 3rd grade. If I remember, knew that song? Did any of you learn it? The New Testament books that way? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the ex Romans, and to Corinthians. Okay, never mind. Okay, <laughs> fill them in. I've given you time to get there. Did you volunteer? Yes, she did. Okay, one, one verse. Fill them in. Chapter 1, um, verse 1 and 2. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother. Unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, 
Mine's walked out. Okay, don't worry about after you, our sister Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church that meets in your house. So uh, we know those people involved in the church at Colossae. And uh, we, we have a good strong letter that he's writing and we'll have some good prayer principles there. And it's, it's interesting as, you, as we were reading the initial portion of scripture in chapter 1, it talked about patience in, in enduring with joy. Remember that? Yeah. With yeah. joy. Shortly after the timing of the letter to the Colossian believers, there was a massive earthquake in Colossae. The city was never rebuilt. And so the pictures that I have for you today are of ruins. Not even really good ruins. They haven't reconstructed anything in Colossae. It was totally wiped off the map. And never rebuilt. And many believe that's one of the reasons, even though it was a major church at one point that received a letter from Paul, it was not one of the churches in the book of Revelation that Jesus wrote a letter to. Because they had scattered mostly to Ephesus. And so the and also, just down the road the other way is Laodicea. Laodicea. So, uh, the church ultimately was dispersed. They had undergone a huge earthquake. Did you read about the earthquake in Morocco? Yes. yes. See that? Yes. And uh, the death tolls up around 3,000 right now, isn't it? With another several thousand missing. And uh, just rubble. And they're not even talking about rebuilding the places that have... It's just gone. And that's, you know, in that part of the world, uh, the building structures and things such as that, Colossae was a Greco-Roman city, and so it had, all, it had all the pillars and the temples and everything else, but it was reduced to rubble. And... Uh, let me just take you a, a brief look. I couldn't get good pictures because taking pictures of an empty field, no fun. No, nobody does that. <laughs> and so I don't have any great pictures of the ruins at Colossae because they've never even tried to put them back together. Was there ever a uh church building or did they mostly meet in people's houses? We have no idea about closet. We have no idea. We know that they didn't have a synagogue. No mentioning of Jewish population, therefore no synagogue, which is where most churches met. Uh, but uh, you remember in Philippi, they met down by the riverside for prayer meetings. And then Paul stayed in the house of Lydia. But uh, if there's a Jewish population like there was in Ephesus, they met in the synagogue and had access to the scrolls, Moses and, and all the rest. Now, hard to see, I'm sorry. I can't get this thing to blow up for me. But it looks like it's just blown up anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> this, my dear friends, is what's left of the entire city of Colossae. They got a road beside it, but they haven't tried to rebuild a thing. Uh, there's a side view of it. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you want to go there? That's horrible. Let's get another great picture. Oops, I missed it. It doesn't enlarge if you click on the picture? I tried. It just doesn't want to work for me. You have to go like this. <laughs> well, I'll put it on your computer. <laughs> Those are some of the stones laying around. So, I have a question. Do people do, uh, does not live there anymore? 
Nobody lives in what was ancient Colossae. They all moved to neighboring cities and villages that were not impacted by the earthquake. Do they know what the population was? No, we have no idea. The way that they computed populations, anybody remember how they would compute the population by the, of a city? By the tax ordinance. No. No. Well, I'm, I feel so, so bad. I've taught this for 16 years here. Uh, they'd go into a city and they would go, when they found the theater, the big amphitheater things, they would measure the seats and go times five. And that was the population of the city estimated because they would build the theater to house the head of the household and estimated four to five children in every household a wife and several children and uh, that's how they computed in ancient times how we compute today the size and the population of a city you go into Ephesus and you can look at the the, the theater you see the seating arrangements. When we go to uh, Scythopolis or uh, Beit Shan in Israel, you'll see the massive theater. They estimate the population based upon four to five times how many seats are in the theater. Mm -hmm. It looks like they had to have some kind of idea before they ever built it. How many well, I'm sure they did, but as far as the records that we have, this is archaeologically speaking, you know, how we can determine the size of that population. Because all the records are. Did they do that same way in Rome? Yeah. yeah. So they got that's there. why you have a massive Colosseum. I was going to Rome. say that. Massive. And, and the city of Rome is not as big as one might think. Uh, they, they owned a lot, but they were conquerors of the world. And so every theater we will go into, when we go to Israel in January, we will be traveling to several of these outdoor theaters, open theaters. And uh, you can see the size of them and then realize that they calculated the sizes of the population by the seats in the, in the theater because women weren't, weren't really supposed to attend unless they were dignitaries like queens or very popular people. Uh, just the, the head of the household and the rest didn't come so they multiplied by four to five. Mm -hmm. so. But this is the uh, rubble. <laughs> that's, that's Barney over there. You remember Barney? Barney? Never mind. Barney Rubble. You don't remember? <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I remember Barney. Barney, Barney. This is an aerial view of, of Colossae and then over in this direction on the seaside is Ephesus. Colossae the earthquake didn't go very far. No, it was very limited. But it just, here's an aerial view of Colossae. <laughs> you can see the outlines of where some things were. But they have done no, they started different archaeological digs but there was not enough stuff left wow. to rebuild. Mm -hmm. hmm. Another aerial picture of it. You think they'll rebuild Morocco? I doubt it. <coughs> From the destruction that's there and the way that you're seeing, it doesn't appear, at least that segment that's totally destroyed in Morocco. That's a nice picture. Hmm. Oh, here's the the most activity. Those are trees. <laughs> you know. So, aren't you thrilled that you got to see the ruins of, of uh, Colossae? Well, do they know that it was a bustling city, like business? We have no idea. Huh. We have no idea. But my, 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 my. Hmm. From 
current slide. That's where I want to be. Okay. So, other questions about Colossae that I can't answer. <laughs> You know, when you look at those kind of earthquake situations, uh, and if you, how many of you have seen some of the footage about the Morocco, Morocco earthquake? They, they don't know where to start. It's just annihilated. Now, not the whole city, but a huge, significant part of it. And uh, so, rebuilding is probably, they're not even talking about it. They're just trying to find any survivors. And uh, so they're just, just working on that. So Colossae, shortly timetable wise after this letter was sent to the church, is the time that the church went through this massive earthquake. Mm -hmm. Their building wasn't destroyed. They didn't have one. They, their houses were destroyed. And you, you, you saw from the, the aerial views, there wasn't another city that sprung up around it either. Mm -hmm. They've got roads to get you out of there and you go to other places. But nothing significant at that site has ever been rebuilt. The Lord through this letter was helping trying to help the end of the band that come across right now but pay attention the church God does that kind of thing mm -hmm. I live in terrible terrible times in our world and America is being shaken to its very foundations yes, it by the Christians are not prepared living in California for the tough times that we're walking in. The Christians at all. And if well honestly, but they wouldn't. Things happen 
they immediately want to, why did God allow that to happen? And then they, they, they you know, uh, they, were, they were living for the Lord. Well, I've tried to live for the Lord, and I've brought my family up in this, and this happened. Uh, if you don't have a spiritual understanding of the will of God, uh, crises can drive you from God. Yes, it can. can I get a witness? Yes, it can. Yes, it does. And the enemy wants to use that. If we don't understand <laughs> God's perfect will, God's permissive will, uh, God's allowance of his sovereignty, but also his allowance of free will, we're going to get messed up. That's right. It can mess you up. And uh, I'll, I've had personally, I've had people come up, ask me questions. Well, why did he allow that? And I said, you need to watch yourself. Because you don't understand what God's doing. And, it's rise. and I, I'm going to pray for you that you... Why are you laying that on me? You know? After my, after my son passed away, I had people coming up and give me all kinds of interesting yeah. theories and ideas. Yeah. And... Uh, and I had to rebuke her because it, it was hurtful to me. Mm -hmm. why, why are you laying that on me? I'm just walking with the Lord. I'm just trying to stay on pace with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes that's a full-time job, just hanging in there yes, when you're walking through rocky times. Don't if you don't have any understanding of the will of God and the perfect will of God and the permissive will of God, you're always going to be churned up. Yeah. No matter what happens. Don't you think the Jewish people in the, in the concentration camp asked the same question? Yeah, well, a lot of them Why? lost their faith. Why? You know. And uh, and yet, many of the Jews in concentration camps, we have we have evidence that they still celebrated or tried to celebrate to the best they could all the feasts of Israel. They had nothing to sacrifice. But they had, they still, they, they built menorahs. They built, they had all kinds of things for Passover that they carved out of rock to try and remember the Passover. And there they were in death camps. They were holding on to their faith. Well, according to that movie, uh, Cinema's List, uh, he had some kind of, trying to think of a word for the Jewish people in his factory. And he, he told that one uh, rabbi, he said, the sun's going down. Don't you have a ceremony to do? And yeah, Schindler's, had, Schindler's List, uh, um, I don't recommend the movie. It's a lot of profanity and vulgarity. Yeah, in, but, but uh, you know, you can bypass that if you read the book. But the, uh, uh, the you know, when you're going through tough times, if you don't have a good, solid understanding of God's perfect will, His permissive will, and free choice and free will, you're going to get all screwed up. You're going to be messed up. Yes. Uh, I'm going to lose, lose my time here. Let me move on. We need to look at God's perfect will versus God's permissive will. You say, well, isn't God sovereign? Can He just make us do whatever He wants? Yeah, He could, but He doesn't. Did anybody, did God come out of heaven and force you to receive his salvation? No. Right. It's a free gift. But you've got to receive it personally. Uh, he doesn't make us be saved. Now there are some doctrines, that people that have their doctrine that we had no choice. God determined who would be saved and who would be lost. Well then why witness to anybody? That's right. If it's already predetermined. That's that makes right. absolutely no That's sense at all. Right. So, uh, I'm just going to not even deal with that side of it. That's just lunacy. But, also, yeah. But it also calls God a liar. Yeah. Because he said he's not willing that any should perish. Right. That's part of God's perfect will. God, we'll look at a few of these things here. God's perfect will, if God had his way, he wants everyone to be saved. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And uh, he, uh, 
I'm going to read it. We're getting short on my time here. Uh, his perfect will, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. Well, then, why aren't everybody saved? Because we have a free will. Yes. You remember back when, when uh, in the Old Testament, when he says, Choose you this day whom you will serve, either the God of your fathers or the God of the Egyptians. But you get to choose. I don't know where in the world these people that say we don't have free will or choice get off with it. I mean, they just ignore huge chunks of Scripture. It's a choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. So I get a choice. Yes, you do. Is it God's will for you to choose salvation? Yes, it is. But it's your choice. It's totally your choice. And uh, God's perfect will is that we be saved. But we have a choice. He doesn't force us. It's not, it's not a choice if we have no choice. Right? He makes intercession. He doesn't say you according to have what you want. He wants you to have what's in God's will in your direction. Okay? And then I need somebody to read Romans 12, 1 and 2. We'll do that one. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Okay, Becky's got it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service, and be not informed of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is possible for us to prove and to know, to live in the center of God's will for our lives. God has a will for each of our lives. You remember what we saw there in the first verse of Colossians today? Paul, an apostle by the will of God. It wasn't God's will for somebody else. It was God had a specific will as it related to Paul. I believe, according to Scripture, God has a specific will in your life and in mine. And how many of you have ever, I'm, I'm not trying to mess anybody up here, but how many of you have ever got stepped outside of God's perfect will for your life? Okay? We can do that. Did God force you out? No. Did you choose? Yeah. It may have, you say, well, it just kind of happened. Well, yeah, it happened, but but it was a, a choice. This is this is his will. This is, you know, like when I get on my my GPS in the car, and uh, have you ever had this one happen? How many of you have the GPS, you know, the, uh, on your phone or whatever, and it's telling you which way to go, and I and I put it on, and I, but of course, me, I had to stop and get it. And the moment I turned in, it was 71 South. And, but I turned in and returned to the route. Have you it ain't heard something? Get back on the route. By an act of my will, I got off the route that would get me where I was supposed to go. If I don't do it, so the same. That's the reason I always read your will, and your will, and I need to be in for God's will for my life. There is a perfect will of God, and it's computed there in Colossians. God had a own typing. Then I need also somebody to look up 1 Thessalonians 4 1 through 8. We'll do that. Okay, Sean's got that. All right, go with Colossians 4 12. You paid it. This is one of you above will of God. He's praying that the believers at Colossae would walk and live and abide in the will of God. 
And if we abide in the will of Because if we're all not the same by the end of because God's not working, you know, if you're in the center of God, if you all are a lot of sheep, when the person beside you in the center of God, and we need to, if, if somebody is, is fussing with somebody else in the church, somebody ought to be it. They've shown it many, many times. Uh, they knew what, or else they've been running the other way too. Now, time over it. But having those people know that they do what do we really how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you to the reality that each one. So also as we forewarned you and test you reject he rejects this, does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Okay. Here it specifically says God's will for you as a Christian is to set your part, your life apart unto Him. It's called sanctification. It begins at salvation and continues by the power of the Spirit and the Word to clean us up and to set us on the right path. It's God's will yes. for us to become more like Him than we are like the world. It's leaving stuff behind, you know. It's... Uh, divesting yourself of things of the world and drawing closer to Him. As it says in the Scriptures, laying aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, amen, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross. There are crosses, there are crises, but if you keep your eyes on the prize, boy, this tonight's lesson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going. But but it's so important for us to pray about being in the center of God's will for our lives. So important for parents to pray that their family is in the center of God's will for their life. That pray for you individually, that you're in the center of God's will, so no matter what comes your way, and let's face it, you don't like to hear this, nobody likes to hear this, nobody wants to preach about it, bad stuff can happen yes, it can to good people of the Lord. So you're not spinning your wheels saying, well, am I right? Did God do this to me? Is this, you know, is this, you know, now if you're in the center of God's will, you can walk through it with him, joyfully knowing we're going to make it through one way or another. Where it's like Corey Tim Boom in a prison camp, yeah. her sister didn't make it through. She died. But Corey made it through. You say, well, why, why didn't... If you're in the center of God's will, you can walk through any circumstance and know God walks with you. Yes, sir. Whether in life or in death. And we're, we're producing today the, a church full of believers who are only equipped for the daytime, but not for the dark night. We're like the, the virgins with our lamps, and we're okay as long as the sun's shining. And there's butterflies, yeah. rosebuds, and everything's going well, and I've got a job, and I've got a house, and I've got this, that, or the other, but not equipped when the midnight comes, and the cry goes out, bridegroom's coming, he says, whoa, 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 he can't see our face with our lantern to let us in, uh, we better, would you give us some oil? No, I don't have any, I, 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 you know, uh, they got to stay where they were and receive the bridegroom, in the parable, because they were equipped to stay even in the dark. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. I got some more. I got some more. I got some more. Uh, let's see. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. 
I'll read that one and you get ready for the somebody get ready for the next ones here. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks for what? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That we rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. This is God's will. We can know God's perfect will. If we're always grumbling and complaining and grumbling and griping, we have stepped out. <laughs> is it all right to, to acknowledge the negative things that are happening? Yes. But we, we pray about it. And we keep rejoicing. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Who will read 1 Peter 2, 13-17? You got that one. I need somebody to read 1 Peter 4, 19. Oh, come on, people. Help me out. Oh, I Becky. got it. Becky's got that one. 1 John 2, 15-17. Okay, good deal. All right. We're going to make it through here. All right. Okay, 1 Peter 2, 13-17. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Okay, he's telling us that we, we should not be in a situation where we are just uh, angry for angry's sake. It's the will of God for our lives to reflect in the middle of whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. We're servants of the Most High God. Yes. You are a representative of the Lord Jesus Let's say you're in a restaurant, okay? And you're getting terrible service. Uh, the food came out and it wasn't any good. And you are so angry, you yell at your waitress. Now, what did she have to do about the cook of your food? Nothing. And you say, well, you know... Uh, you're, you're a terrible waitress, you know, this food, take this back, this is awful, and you bring her to tears, and, and she says, oh, what's the matter? Let me pray for you. I'm a Christian. What might she think about your Christianity? If you treated her like a dog? Yes, not very good. You know, you know uh, we need to live a life in the center of, it is God's will for us to conduct ourselves in such a way that people that make false accusations are, are proven to be nuts. Mm -hmm. right. And that we're, we're trying to live righteously. Uh, that's the reason when I, when I talk to staff members, over the years I've hired staff members and, and uh, try to coach them in how to uh, grow in the Lord in leadership. I says, you cannot keep people from making false statements about you. I said, it... It goes with the territory. But you can live a life that lets everybody know they're a liar. That's what he's talking about. That's good. Okay. Okay. First uh, Peter. No, yeah, First Peter 419. No, did I do 17? Yeah. I did that. First Peter 419. You can. Okay, go for it. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the oh, keeping. Oh, oh. Huh? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh. Commit the keeping of their souls to Him and well doing as to a faithful Creator. Oh, we don't like this verse. Sometimes it's the will of God. <laughs> Talk to Stephen about it. Talk to Paul about it. Were they in the center of God's will? Yes, they were. Remember when Paul said, I've asked the Lord several times yeah. to deliver me from this demonic attack. And he said, my grace is for you. For 
do you think the thawing inside was? Well, it tells you what it was. It tells you right in the scripture exactly what it was. A messenger to buffet me, a messenger, an angel to buffet him, a demonic force that went about smacking Paul right and left. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Lord several times. I mean, did Paul get smacked around a lot? Yes, yes he did. It was a demonic force, a messenger of Satan, the word messenger, an angel of Satan, to buffet him, to smack him around, shipwrecks and snake bites and everything else. But the Lord said, he, Paul said, I've, I've asked you several times. I'd really rather not do this anymore, you know. And he says, my grace is sufficient. Hang in there. Hang in there. We're going to make it through. And all of life, which nobody can take away. So sometimes God's will for me is going through tough times. He said, already in the world, if any man loves the Lord, the real good lover is not in him. For all that is in the world, the perfection, we're going to accomplish great things. We may, it may be, uh, as the old song put it, some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. And so he's saying there that, you know, it's the will of God as you're going through this. You're in the center of the work, work, will of God, you're going to make it. Not just to know God's will in our verse today, but to know God's will with wisdom and spiritual understanding. Somebody comes up, you know, uh, I don't understand what God's doing. You tell me what God's will is in this situation. Drop that hot potato in somebody else's pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, unless the Lord gives you revelation knowledge, just keep your mouth shut. A lot of times, have you ever had anybody do this to you? I have. Have you ever had, well, I think God's trying to tell you this, or I think God's trying to say this to you. You know, nobody's had that happen to you? Nobody messing with you ever? Boy, you're blessed. Maybe it's just me. I'm a target. But uh, you need to have wisdom and spiritual understanding of God's will. Because speed and learn. We're all gonna, let's all gather up here and, and uh, sit down and sister, sister's going to share with us. Yeah, what is your office hours? Yeah. <laughs> it's Lucy. The doctor is in. Uh, oh. <laughs> many times the will of God doesn't make a lick of sense. Then we shouldn't pray to know the reason. Wisdom and spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. Sometimes it's just like as a parent, sometimes my kid would not understand if I explained why I was doing something. It would take longer to explain. And then they'd still look at you and say, huh? The reason is behind. And if it doesn't work, let me know. <laughs> the reason is behind. That's right. The Lord could start off and say, well, you know, in, in 100 years, I'm going to be doing this. has a part to play in it, huh? Huh? How, how could that be? Well, I, I could explain it, but I... So I may be going through... Uh, how many... ...of years. The same scriptures. I was going to play it for you today, but I couldn't find it. 
We need prayer for this Friday and Saturday is our food uh, delivery and boxing up. And then Saturday is distribution. And boy, I need some help. Yep. Need some help. You can come and help. ministering to the west side of Columbus through this avenue of praying for every car that comes and uh, we leave the results in God's hands. Amen. Yes? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and also pray uh, as for Mike and, and, and Connie they came to Sunday mm -hmm. that God will put a fire back in their soul that will come with that. Yes. I'll come next time. Pray for Mike and Connie, and, and uh, the Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, pray for Sophia. She has sinusitis, mm -hmm. and she keeps getting a low grade temperature. It goes up and down, up and down, and just pray that she can get over that. Mm -hmm. We want to pray for Sharon. Uh, she's got some procedures and things coming up. And let's just pray for the Lord to just, just heal her right now. Amen. 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 Yes. I pray for Kim. I guess she lost her father. Yes, yes. Uh, Chad's, Chad's father passed away. Uh, Kim. Uh, okay. Well, let's go to prayer. And uh, uh, due to the lateness of the hour, if it's all right, I'm just going to pray for you, okay? Yes. Okay. Sure. Father God, we do come in Jesus' name and yes. we're thankful yes. for the privilege that is ours to come boldly yes. to the throne of grace that we might find mercy to help in our time of need. Yes. We've got lots of needs. You've heard these prayer requests. They go up as incense before your throne. Yes. And you hear everyone. You see every need. You know the names of those that are heavy on our heart. Yes. We pray first of all for those who do not know you as Savior and Lord as yet. We pray, Father, you would draw them to salvation. Those that have walked with you and have become wayward, draw them back, Father, as the prodigal was yes. brought back to his house. We pray, Father God, for the, these healing needs, yes. individuals that uh, are facing surgery, individuals that have been given a negative report. We pray, Father, right now for Chuck. We pray for, for Sharon, for healing of her body. We pray, Father, for Sophia and the sinusitis. We pray for the situations with, with Kim and Chad. We pray you would be with them as they go back and forth to Indiana and for the services there. We, ask, we pray, Father, for uh, the, the people in Morocco. The, yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. The desolation and the, and the, the flooding in Libya. There's these things, your word said that there's going to be these things happen in all kinds of places, but the end is not yet. We pray, Father, through these crises that those who know you would step up and share that there's hope in Jesus Christ, that salvations will come out of this, that light turnaround will come out. And we pray, Father, for the upcoming food distribution ministry, that, Father, you'd give us favor that we'd see souls for our labors, and that, Father, people would be blessed and encouraged. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One last thing. This Sunday morning, we're going to be sharing the drama of uh, Jedediah Smith uh, using the story of the freeing of the slaves, the breaking of chains, to talk about the freedom that's in Christ Jesus for those who are slaves in sin. And uh, he'll, be, he'll be coming at you as a Quaker evangelist. So just come on out. Bring some friends and Jebediah will be there with you. Yes, he will. I, I have it on good authority. <laughs>
You still don't have it? 